Hello, Anna. Hello, Julia. You're here because I asked you to share more of what really happened at the women's Women of Earth Lab in Portugal with Anne-Chloé Distremo and Vera Franco. And I know it's been a while since then, it's been a few weeks, and at the same time, I'm guessing you know, the longer term effects are still showing or things may have shifted. So I invite you to share, or start sharing. What do you want to share about this lab? Yeah, thank you. Mm. I, what do I want to share? I already, like actually the first day was already, was like a marked in a way a milestone for me when we, as a group of women, exited the patriarchy and we 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 draw a line in the room and we said okay this is where we are right now in patriarchy and this is the new world like this is archiarchy and it was such an amazing process it was such a dense energy in the room like women would some women would burst out into anger, others into tears, others crippling with fear. And I was there, like at the beginning, I didn't really, I felt numb about it. And then it started. And it was like, I felt this huge fear to exit the patriarchy. And it felt like, it felt so real. And, and then like some women would start to to cross the line, to go to archiarchy and called for, for other women to join. And, and when I stood up, it was like, really like walking through fire in a way. It was really like, we really actually it did remind me of the fire walk I've done, like to, to walk with this fear and cross this line. And I really felt this huge fear of Oh my God! I, I will lose my friends. I will lose my family. I will. I will. I will lose that connection if I do that. That was my biggest fear to, to cross that line. And when I did it, I was like, I asked the women before I did cross, like, do you feel connected to me still? And they said yes. So they kind of helped me to, to see. Wow, I can still be in connection with the people in patriarchy, even if I, I live in archiarchy. And this was so powerful to me, like my whole nervous system went through this fear, like it really went through me. And this this to me is like the, the most remarkable moment in, in the lab, like the whole energy in that room and how magic it was. It was amazing and to see women by woman by woman crossing this line and facing her her fears or like what what's needed to cross that line yeah and it's it's interesting because it's something that it's like a as if i needed to change my structure to do that and it it's hard to explain in in words but it's it's this energetic shift that needed to happen inside of me and it and I can still sense it. I can still feel it in me. It's like something that holds me upright. And and it's it's something that I can connect to when I'm like in, on a daily basis, like okay, no, I'm an archiarchy. And it's I'm getting shivers now speaking about it. It's really, it's magic. I'm so grateful that and Chloe and Vera created this space. Yeah, and um, and it also, also involved some kind of veil that was like lifted, like, like taken off. And now I see, I see differently, I see, I see what's happening. Like I see what's happening in the patriarchy. Like what I see more. I have more clear sight on on the um, the mechanisms. Like how men interact with women. How women interact with men. 
which I, I kind of had a, I wouldn't say I had a blindfold before, but I didn't really see it clearly. It was like cloudy, like something didn't want me to, to really see this. And, and since I made this shift in me, I, I can see that and I feel the pain about it. Like I'm, before I couldn't sense it that much, the pain about it. And now it's like, yeah, I feel fear to speak about it because it's, it, it brought me to reality in a way. And it's really s scary still to, for me to walk there. And especially when I'm with women who have not been to, to that process, have not done that process to really, to see how, how easily they give their center away and how easily, especially they save men. Like I'm, I'm, not, I'm noticing this over and over again, something is happening and then the man is kind of treated like a child or also acts like a child. Okay, please help me. And then women get up and jump and, and do something about it. Yeah, and that's in a way scary to see. What's your fear about that? My fear is that it's such a ingrained mechanism that it takes quite a bit to get out of it. And also my fear is that some women might not want to do this because of the possibility of losing the man. Because that's also something that I saw that's kind of a, a result is, okay, I start again. After the, the lab, we had uh, the Archie Archie Maker Fair. So men were coming in um, on the last day and I sensed how much, um, how in fear they were and how no woman would actually do the saving. So I'm, my fear actually tells me, like I'm, I'm afraid about women not holding through, like not holding through is not the word, but not keeping to it. And then saying, okay, no, okay, I will save you again. Like I, I take it back. And what is the risk of that? Like if women don't hold their center and give away their center and start rescuing men, what is the risk or what is the consequence? The consequence might be that some of the men won't be able to hold it and might leave. That could be a consequence. You're saying if they keep their center, some men will leave? Yes. And to me, I'm not saying this is bad. I'm just saying this could be a natural consequence. And what is the consequence of women giving their center away? Like, you know, not staying in archaearchy. The consequence of women not staying in archaearchy is... Oh, like staying a machine, in a way, like running on autopilot, denying denying one's own past, like not coming truly alive. It's like cutting away liveness in a way. It's really this, it's suffocating. To me, that's what ha what's happening. So how do you keep the seed alive or this connection to archaearchy and also what I hear is your, your dignity, you know, to remember, I live in archaearchy, I source archaearchy. How do you do that? Mm, one thing I do is I watch my center, like I'm observing it, and there's still like an echo of my center wanting to go away to men. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very alert about this. And then I take it back again. And I, 
one thing that really helps me is my sword. Like I remember, I remind myself of having this sword. And I, it's funny enough since, not funny enough, but it's interesting since the lab, I actually, I would say I didn't have one conversation with a man that I didn't want to. Like I really, maybe there was, no, actually there was one thing with the cab driver. He asked me some kind of question that that's where I, I noticed, okay, well, I'm like at the edge, like I'm, I'm not sharp enough. I wasn't sharp enough in that moment. But other than that, I'm really glad to not go into conversations that I don't want to have. And also I keep a distance towards men. Like I'm yeah, I'm keeping I keep I'm keeping a distance. I'm noticing some men then want to come close, like seemingly accidentally, like it's a seeming seeming accident. And I'm like by me being this like straight, like I'm noticing that some of them want to come close and then I I, I deviate. So I'm it's it's more like it feels a little bit like a um like a martial art in a way. It feels like yeah, it, it totally need, totally needs an alertness in the presence for me to walk in this and to keep walking in this. And I'm going to come back to the women's lab itself. How what happened after that process? I mean, I've heard a few stories or legends, but what happened for you after the process in the lab? What happened for me was that there was like a, somehow this process brought us all together. It was like, a, it to me, it, it gave a total purpose to what we were doing in those days, like a, a broader purpose, like not like totally noticing this is, I don't do this just for myself or we don't do this because it's fun. It was also fun many times, but we do, it felt like we had common ground then. And it was really connecting. And it also called all the warrioresses up and for me, also what happened afterwards was like my anger was actually like wanting to to just burst out. And it never happened like this in any other lab or training before. There was just like having this this common purpose somehow helped me to just get naked and look really bad, like really really um, melt away, like melt this prison away, you know, somehow, yeah. I'm afraid I cannot really explain it. Like, I hope you you got it, or I hope it, it does land. I get the sense that, or also from the other conversations I've had, I get this real sense of, by this common process at the start or pretty at the beginning on day one this radical collaboration as women became possible because you had this yeah common cause or clarity about hey i'm here for this hey i'm here for this also we're here to source archaearchy so being on a team radically relying on each other and radically collaborating and and then all the survival strategies seem like seem to be able to fall away because you don't have to pretend with your sisters or something like that. Yes, yes. And it actually also shifted. It just came to me right now. 
when we started the training, I felt so much fear to just be among women and there's no men around. And after this process, I didn't have that anymore. Not at all. Like I've, before I was really like feeling this patriarchal fear of being, being with these women and and then it vanished somehow. Was there also some, is there something else, any other legend that you want to share from the lab or from what happened afterwards? Mm. Yeah, for, for me, what happened during the lab, like this thing of completely looking completely bad, this was a huge moment for me, like to do this amongst women. And yeah, the other legend is how how we we as women created this space where then the the men entered, and how in a way we we all held this space, and how. It was magic in a way because it's it showed that by women being having done this step first, the the men would actually be confronted with their survival strategies. And and to me that's a legend actually. And my legend is also that I I noticed I I wouldn't like before I would actually give my center away to Clinton a lot in the trainings. And I could just be with him and ask him whatever I wanted to ask and not give my center away. And this was really also a new new experience for me to, to not make any other man the authority in the room. And I felt so... I felt I had my dignity back in a way. I did have my dignity back. And it's empowering. I felt empowered in my, and it's like, it's something in, it's, yeah, it's really this thing of having, feeling it in all of my body, like in my bones in in my, in my flesh, like everywhere. Yeah. I'm curious. Like, how do you describe this dignity? What is what is that? What is that dignity? It's to me. It's um. It's a right that everybody has, and to take it back, it's. Okay, what is the dignity? It's maybe not so much as an explanation from a hit, but what is your experience of it? You know, like when you yeah. take it back. Yes, it somehow makes me taller. It makes me take up more space. Like it also has to do with this the space that I occupy. It it makes me bigger but not in a way of showing off more like okay this is me this part of me and I'm present and it's also um it actually also is a like um it's a declaration like I declare okay I am here I'm here and you're not to mess with me. Like really this. Yeah, it's it has an energetic quality also. And it feels in the body, it feels like a I would say that I do feel like a warrioress then. Like I feel I also 
it's connected to the sword also, like having the sword and and walking upright and also walking. It, it also has a, a movement in it, like not being something static, like it's it, that dignity also has a dyna dynamic aspect in in all of the bodies. Yeah. And it's really funny, like I come back again to this being upright. It's, it's as if something, like something would pull me up and I'm, I'm up. It's like, yeah, it's beautiful. And what else comes with it, oh, sorry. What else comes with it is like more, like the, the the angle of sight is 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 bigger. Like it's as if I I can see more. Like also behind me. Yeah. Thank you, Anna.